In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a baby Dilophosaurus. Now, technically speaking, since this is step one, you could just do this first step and use it as a lizard or some other type of animal, but I'm going to make it a baby Dilophosaurus. So I have my egg next to me, and the first thing I'm going to do is roll out a coil that's slightly tapered, which means it's bigger on one side and it gets skinnier on the other. This is going to be the body and I'm going to make it larger than I need it to be. So see how much larger it is than I need? I'm going to cut it off. It's always easier to make something a little bit larger and trim it down than try to add clay on because it's always going to be a little bit different than what you want. It's a way to uh, kind of save time later. I'm going to see how well it fits because you only have to create what you're going to see, right? So if you'll notice, I can see a little bit inside my body right here, but I'm probably going to add an arm there later, so it'll be okay. Now this chunk that I trimmed off, I'm going to make into a sphere, and this is going to become my head. I want my head at a slightly different angle, so adding that on a little below will work well. Remember to score and slip every time you add anything on. So I've got my slip container here and I'm just using a plastic modeling tool to score. I'm going to blend this down and start shaping my head. Now when you're shaping your head, you, it's always going to be easier if you have a reference photo of what you're creating in front of you. But you want to think about the fact that this animal is going to have some eye sockets, so you're pushing that in. It's going to have a snout, so you're shaping and slowly pinching the head into the shape that you want. If you have excess clay, definitely pinch it off because this is about getting your basic shape and mold of your head done. You might have eye sockets, a good time to make those. And you're just blending everything in so it has a nice clean look to it. Probably going to turn that head a little bit, but for right now, that seems to fit pretty well. Remember, you can always edit and shape. Tools are great for that. I'm going to create a little bit of a spine and some areas for some different glazes to catch later and I'm going to slip and score where I want my animal to reside in my egg. I'm also going to plan out where the arms go. So I'm cleaning off my tool and just take a minute and I'm going to clean off the inside of my egg. There's some clay boogers and some stuff I don't want so I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a finished look here. So clean it up a bit and if you want you can draw in some cracks so you can carve in some cracks with either a tool or a pencil sometimes that can be a really good uh, little add-on and a great place for some clay glaze to catch later when you make your arms you want them to be relatively the same and they don't have to be big so I'm just going to use some of my little bit bitty pieces that I didn't use earlier And this is always going to be dependent on the type of animal you're making. But if you're making one similar to mine, I'm creating just little arms. So I started off with a small sphere of clay. And I want mine to have a little bit of personality to them. So they're going to curve. Make sure you're smoothing out any cracks that happen to come about. And they're going to slightly curve. And I want both of mine to have a little slightly curve to them. But your arms could look different than mine. It just depends on what you want your end result to look like. I'm just gonna I'm not quite finished making them yet, but I want to make sure they're large enough and they're looking where uh, like where I want them to be. Keep in mind they are a little bit big right now in the shoulders, but once they're slipped and scored on and blended in, it'll look normal and it's gonna look really good. So you're gonna have some personality 
with our baby Dilophosaurus. Anytime you add clay, slipping and scoring, scoring and slipping. You can always shape things and make them um, more finished once it's added, but it's good to get it added and work on it from where its end result will be. Because adding the clay always gives it a slightly different look because it gets a little bit squished when I press the clay together. All right, I'm gonna work on the paws or the claws, I suppose. Um, and I'm also gonna add a little bit of slip and use my plastic modeling tool to blend this arm in so it becomes kind of a shoulder joint and make sure I have some of that angle to the arms. If you lost some of your shape, that's what this plastic modeling tool is for, so you can reshape it. You can always carve clay off with this tool as well. It's great for that. But I'm going to blend this back into the shoulder. And I will have to work on the claws a little bit. The more time you spend perfecting these little details, the better your end result will be. Because how it looks when it goes into the kiln is how your project will look when it comes out of the kiln. It doesn't change except for getting slightly smaller when the because when the clay dries out, it shrinks around 12%. All right. So I'm just smooth in and put in my claws exactly where I want him to be because I want him climbing out of this egg. Easy way to create claws is to just push, use this little modeling tool. You can also use a pencil and I'm just pushing into the clay to create a separation where your toes or your claws would be. So I'm just pushing in like that. Super simple, very effective. When they're like this and the clay is super soft, you can slightly separate your claws a little bit if you want to. Personal preference. And like I mentioned, if you don't want to do the second step, you don't have to and this baby Dilophosaurus could just be like a lizard. If you kept your eggshell top that you cut out during step two, like I just showed, you can use that and put it on top of your animal. But I am not going to do that for this one. And I do want it to be a baby Dilophosaurus, not a baby uh, kimono dragon or lizard. So I'm going to start plotting out and planning those fans around his head. I want them to be as close to the same size as possible. So I'm making them very similar and kind of simultaneously. We start off with half of a circle and then you want to have that fan rotating and it's good to use your fingers to create that wave. You always want to check to see how things are looking before adding them on. Look 
before I add that part on, I am going to define my face a little bit, and I'm going to have an open mouth. So I'm just going to use this tool, and I'm looking straight at my animal because I want it even. I don't want one side to look odd. I want it symmetrical on both sides. So I'm just pushing in slightly with my tool, and then I'm going to carve out just a little bit of clay in the mouth. And if you want to watch the fan, check out step two. Thanks for watching.